All right, so today we're gonna be doing an install on new radius arm brackets, new shocks, um, pivot bushings, and radius arm bushings on this uh, on this four x four Ford Bronco. Stay tuned. All right, so I'm trying to take the uh, top mount off of the shock here. I'm not sure if you can tell, but the shaft, this guy right here, is just spinning. Let's look at this replacement shock I got for it. Basically, there's a tip on there. It's just around the two flats, and this one here measures a little under 6.2. There's a link in the description for the shock absorber tool. Now I'm going to be installing new shocks, so I don't want to damage them. So I'm kind of testing this out with the old shock. Let's see if it works. Hopefully that makes it not turn. Not that tightness. Maybe I need to stick a piece of rubber in there. See so if I can find some rubber. So let's try this. I got rubber glove and then um, cloth. That seems like it'll work. All right, there we go. Success. Suspension down, see how far she needs to settle. Okay, yeah, so the spring, I think the shock was holding that in. I think it was bottoming out the shock. So, oh wow, shock is loose in there. Woo! I'm glad we're getting this thing replaced. But cool. So that's the way to do it. So this is, yeah, this guy's just hanging out. So yeah, it doesn't look like that marred anything up on here. When you remove the spring retainer, make sure that there is no longer any load on the spring and the axle housing is supported by a jack. All right, so my next step, um, now I got this guy supported, uh, the, uh, front axle with the jack and I got some safety measurements uh, multiple jacks and a tire under here and now I'm gonna like undo the uh, the nut on the radius arm on the back side it's an inch and an eighth socket the impact I've heard these can be tricky Here I tried getting the radius arm out of the bracket without removing the pivot bushing, but that wasn't going to work. All right, so it looks like for in order to, make, to get this to swing out, we're gonna need to undo the pivot, the pivot nut. Yeah, you can see it right there. Uh, yeah, I'll have a little arrow pointing to where it is. But basically it's this, um, you know, it's one of the tractor beams, the TTB twin tractor beam suspension, it's one of those guys. That's the, the pivot rotation point, so that'll be where the pivot bushing repla gets replaced, so we'll do that next. All right, so here's a view from underneath of that um, pivot bushing. I got a socket on it, 11 16th socket and 7 8 um, open end on the other side. Um, this guy feels a little bit loose. I think I ended up using a 13 16th on the back side. I'm gonna see if it drops. Um, I'll let you guys know if it does. I'm gonna try to keep my hands out of the way here on the back side, just in case it does. Okay, so it's out, and it hasn't yet sprung. So 
So I'm gonna try to kinda hold the camera and pry it out. See if it tries to spring out or anything like that. Doesn't wanna, doesn't wanna spring out. All right, so I tried the method of basically just undoing the top uh, mounts on the shock and the spring. Um, you can see the pivot arm, uh, that guy right there, is uh, like the where the pivot bushing is. Is that piece is kind of bent? It's or it's not bent, but it's you know it's not in line with the mount. Uh, and that's because it's still hinging off the radius arm bracket. So I'm going to remove both radius arm brackets in hopes that that will help me unseat the pivot bushing. It'll kind of straighten out so that I can push it down, because right now I can't push it down. Um, as soon as I uninstall that, the only thing that's going to be holding it is the steering linkage and the uh, axle housing. So on the back side of this bolt on the inside of the frame is 15 millimeter, and this guy right here, it, on the nut, is an 18 millimeter. All right, so she's loose, and, and this guy didn't try to swing at me. Um, I can definitely move that pivot joint a little bit more. Uh, so take this thrust away off, and uh, yeah, we'll see if we can get that pivot joint out of there. All right, so the pry bar didn't work, um, but basically what I did was I took this whole assembly, grabbed it by kind of like the spring. You can see I've got it, um, the hub here on the jack stand. So I was able to line up that piece so it wasn't kind of binding in there. It was turned and, and binded in there. And so once I did that, she just fell right out. And so, hmm, yeah, I'm still not sure if you have to take that piece out, but I think I'm going to on the other side. Well, actually, I have to because I'm replacing that um, radius arm mount anyways. But yeah, so on this side it works. I know on the other side I'm gonna have to take the drive shaft out. Not sure if you can see that. All right, so. I ripped this uh, ball joint press at my local auto parts store so that I can um, press out the pivot bushing and press it back in. And so I kind of got my replacement pivot bushing here and I sized this socket, it's a 30 millimeter socket. Um, it's just smaller diameter so I can press it out with that guy. And then this bigger size guy will press it right through here. Um, because this retaining thing, we need to press that out. And we got this guy here. I've never used one of these, but this seems to be the way it works. Is it's got these lips to fit these different receivers sizes. And it just kind of slots in there. And then on the other side, you got where your socket will go. Some of these you can use an impact. Um, anyways, if I do end up using an impact, I'll make sure and grease this guy as to not damage the tool. But that's the plan. All right, so I want to show you guys how this is set up. There you go, you got the socket pressing out the bushing from that side. And on the other side, you got the, uh, kind of a tube piece, another mounting piece. So the lighting's kind of difficult here. Um, basically what I want to show you was this guy. Well, that fell off because it's kind of loosey-goosey in there. Basically the only way I could get it on there was like kind of to get it in the axle housing right there. And so I gotta fix this really quick, but yeah, that was the only orientation that the C clamp would work. All right, so take that guy off. This is the cap, and then spraying it up. A lot of people on the internet use white lithium grease for everything. I'm using this dry lube. Uh, spraying the threads in this guy real quick. Alright, 
So here we got our old bushing and our new bushing. Our new one is kind of more of a solid type. Um, this is all urethane and this one has kind of plastic bits in it. I um, guess we'll see which one works better. They both look very similar so I'm not worried about installing them. Um, the way I'm going to press it in is going to be definitely a little bit. We're swapping We're swapping, before we had this guy, when we pressed it out, it was on this side. But now we're going to put it on this side. This other side here. And then, I'm just going to use that guy to press it in. So hopefully that works out. So I'm just using this surface as kind of a, a bit to press it in. And it also says here, so I'm going to grease kind of the outside here, around the... Uh, the inner sleeve and then the inside of the urethane bushing itself. Okay, so I also wanted to mention this. It says you want the tapered side. You can see to the right here, you want that kind of outside. It says away from the control arm, so that will be facing outside. So I'll put it on like that. This little grease pack was provided with uh, the bushings. All right, we'll press it in. All right, so I just want to show you guys the setup. Um, you can see just on the right end of the screen, uh, just the end of that uh, U-joint press. And then the other side, we got the cup and the, uh, I guess the tube. Went in pretty smooth, a little bit too smooth maybe. Um, but we'll see how she works out when it's all assembled. All right, so I got the tapered side facing me. Might need two hands for this job. <laughs> She's in. Now we need to try to figure out how to align this guy. All right, so to realign this pivot bushing, you can really manhandle this thing by the spring. Um, you get a lot of leverage on the axle that way. Um, so some people say you should remove that thing, but I like to have it. It's nice. Um, so the other thing is I got a jack stand here, I got a jack stand underneath the uh, radius arm, and I got a jack stand underneath the axle closer to the, the pivot bushing. And all those things and kind of uh, manipulating them kind of guides it back in. Also the bushing kind of aligns it back in the uh, mount for this, uh, I guess, axle, whatever you call this guy. I need to figure out the name. One thing you need to be aware of is that the uh, axle has like a slip joint in the other side. And so you'll have to uh, make sure to push this in and out. Because right now it's not aligned. Dealing with the gravel is a constant struggle. I think you could save a lot of time by rolling different components and get away with a lot more um, if you were working on concrete rather than gravel. Success! Alright, so here I got my um, new and old radius arm brackets. And you can see, I'm not sure how well the camera shows it, but basically this guy right here is pretty bent. And when you put the, the bushings on it, it gets really close. It, it might have hit at, at some points of flex and things like that. And this guy right here. Um, doesn't have that problem. We got a lot of gap here. So I'm glad we're replacing these. One thing I do notice right off the bat is that there's two different hole sizes right here and right here uh, because I think this Bronco had factory bolted on uh, 
the, the right side of the passenger side. Uh, and there's like a factory piece, kind of has two welded uh, bolts on it. They go through here and they're bigger size holes than the, the standard rivets, if you have those. And so I want to keep that piece because it helps for assembly. And so I'm going to drill these guys out to 5.9, it's almost 0.6. I think I'll start out with, let's see, what's a 16 past half inch? 9 16 So I'll start out with 9 16 That's pretty close. And see how that works. If that doesn't work, I'll just kind of work the holes a bit. All right, so now we got the holes drilled. We're pretty much ready to install it. Um, I got the uh, different bushing configurations laid out. Um, here we got the smaller bushing. Um, now these do look a little bit different. On the back side here, you got the flat washer, so that'll go right next to the nut. And then got the bigger washer on the inside. Uh, also the spacer, there's a spacer right here as well. Um, smaller washer, or. Er, Flat washer, smaller washer, spacer, and then the bigger washer, and then this, uh, like, I guess, uh, cupped washer on the inside, just like she came off. So I did kind of degrease this guy a little bit. I'm also going to put a little bit of anti-seize on that guy because these can be get kind of stubborn on there. Alrighty, let's see if I can manhandle this guy up there. Let's use another guy. Here I found it easier to install one nut to keep the bracket in place, and then put anti-seize in the other threads, then come back and apply anti-seize to the first bolt. See, that's not quite giving enough compression, so I'm gonna do another ratchet strap deal. Hook into the frame, and around the axle. Uh, actually, I can just go to the front of the radius arm. See if I can get this guy to show the bolt and that's where it gets started. Oh, yeah. Suppression that bushing pretty good. Compressing that bushing. So I got everything installed. Um, I did use the smaller supplied bolts with um, on the sides there. Um, put anti-seize and everything. And I got this back one to where it's just sticking out. The ones are just sticking out there on the back. Um, yeah, I think the seal compressed pretty well. It's probably your thing seals once I, you know, put the strap, put the strap on there, and I attached it to right here on the uh, radius arm to kind of compress it so I could get that back bolt in there. Okay, so I thought about it, and I'm actually gonna replace that guy with um, the larger one that came from the factory because that punched part comes with a bigger hole in it. So I'm gonna leave the one up there that's smaller, but uh, the one in the back I'm gonna re replace with the uh, larger one. 
All right, so it's time to put the new shocks on. First, we're gonna put the sticker on. So, the way they sit, kind of gonna sit a little bit like that. Or no, just gonna sit like that, so we'll put the sticker right there. Going down, I got a little uh, rubbing alcohol. Clean the surface with. lithium grease in here also on the outside so on the inside all right yeah that helped her slide in there getting that white lithium grease on there It, like uh, guess like that, and like that. My thinking is that the piece with the extra little lip is to kind of fit the contour, fit the contour of the um, concave place, and then our nut will go. Our nut will go on top. Now thinking about this, I should have put this on the last because I'm gonna need to constrain the you know the tube portion of this so that I can tighten this nut on here. So that was kind of a mistake. I guess maybe I can slide this down. Yeah, I'll just uh I'll slide that down and then I'll reinstall the boot on this lip here. Yeah, that'll work. Alrighty, so I need to lower my axle down so I can get my spring in there. You want to turn it to where this portion here is going to sit right where uh, it was before. That's pretty good. Crank right up. And then She goes right there. So I'm gonna put a little bit of that white lithium grease on this bolt here. Fit on the mount. It's good though. Stretch your out sleeve shield. Pick it up this high. Right now we got the uh, shock bottomed out, so I'm trying to see where this bottoms up. So that bottoms out right there. So not quite as far as the spring bottoms out, which is kind of what I was hoping for. Um, even though these say they're for a zero to like three and a half inch lift, I would think these would, you know, bottom out the same way the spring would bottom out. But unfortunately that's not the case, so I'll have to lift this guy up a little bit. Um, I guess we'll just see how long these last. Um, like I said, I was hoping that when this was fully extended, it would match the spring. Um, but, you know, the reason why I'm worried about it is because now I'm worried that these aren't going to have enough travel. I'll put these 
top mounts on. and we can uh, put the wheel back on finally. All right, so I've been looking at this and um, I can't really get to these uh, rivets with the grinder, at least with the uh, radius arm in there. And so I still have the drive shaft connected. I wanted to do this just to see how it would react with the drive shaft still connected because um, everybody says you need to remove it on the driver's side. Um, it's not that hard to remove, but I'm just going to see if you can do it without it. Um, but I'm going to try to kind of leverage, like just, uh, I got this mostly unbolted right now. I got it loosened and everything's kind of jacked up. What I want to do is I'm going to try to loosen the pivot bushing and then go back and use the spring like a lever, like I did the other side. Kind of just grab the spring and uh, pull it left and right, and hopefully the pivot bushing will drop, and I can pull this forward. And the slip yoke on the drive shaft will um, allow that to come forward a little bit. But we'll see. All right, so the truck is so hot right now because of the sun that I wasn't able to kind of lean on it to use the spring as leverage. So I just hook um, the top here. Um, near where the sway bar connects. One other thing is my truck doesn't have a sway bar. So all these steps, you might have to remove the sway bar, not sure. Um, likely you would have to, I would think. But anyways, so I did that instead of using the springs leverage and that also worked. Popped the pivot bushing out and now I'll try to get that guy out. See if I can pull him out now that the pivot bushing's free. All right, yeah, so that worked out pretty good. Um, didn't have any problems pulling it out. I actually did have to use a strap here uh, just because I'm working on gravel and it's hard to move stuff, but there wasn't anything binding. Um, you can see that the drive shaft's still on there. So now we'll see how easy it is to get to those rivets. All right, so this is definitely a little bit easier to get to. Um, I'm gonna be able to get to it now. I'm gonna start with the bottom two and then there's a rivet here and then I'm gonna leave this nut until last. camera overheated so you guys missed that but we got all the uh, uh, rivets ground off so now I'm going to remove the last bolt Alrighty, there she is. Now I'll have to bang those guys out. Huh. Alright, so as others have noted, um, the driver's side is a lot more difficult. Um, unless you take the steering linkage off, basically that stuff's in your way. And even if you don't, getting to the back side here with that um, 
the U-joint puller is difficult. So basically I used uh, basically a long bolt and a bunch of different, you know, pieces. There's a sock, the same socket I used to press out on the other side. Um, but yeah, so basically I'm just like stacking washers as this pulls through. Um, I got little spacers here. And yeah, so I'll do the same thing to install it basically. All right, so I thought I'd show you guys how I'm going to uh, install this guy. Just because it showed you the other way, I'll just show you this way as well. So basically I'm using this, uh, this bolt that I just had laying around and this nut. Um, luckily I had to be the right size. This is about half inch, so half inch threaded, threaded rod would work pretty well, I think. So anyways, I'm using this guy to press it in. This is 30 millimeter um, socket. You can get this through there, so it works good to press it through. So I'll do that. And then I have this big washer. This big washer that's from actually the pivot bushing. And then screw on, oops, screw on the screw like that. Um, and then it'll start pressing it through. And then this guy is because it pokes out the backside a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this guy. All right, so I actually had to install the um, this bolt backwards because it wasn't clear it's in this axle on the backside. But um, other than that, everything is the same. All right, so I'm running out of thread spacer in here. Threaded rod would work better because you wouldn't run out of room. All right, there she is. All right, now I'll install this back side. All right, I just want to show you guys this before I put this mess away. So you can see I got two different straps. One pulling it kind of, pulling the radius arm up and one pulling the axle housing back. Also, it had to take the coil off. So that's the same inch and an eighth um, socket. I used a breaker bar, got inside there. Um, I'm gonna put that coil back and then uh, get that pivot bushing back in there. Oh, also I had to take the drive shaft off too. While you have easy access to the drive shaft, it's a good idea to grease the U-joint. The rest of the steps are similar to what we did on the other side. Again, if you do this on concrete, I'm sure you would have a much easier time lining up the radius arm bracket.
All right, so I wanted to um, test how short this uh, shock was on, on this side because on the other side, I didn't um, like push it all the way up when I had it measured. And so I don't really trust the reading. It's not supported by anything, so the spring is just hanging there. And then, um, so this guy, from this bushing to the mating surface here is about 1.375 roughly. 1.375. All right, so I don't know if you guys could see this in the video um, earlier, but basically uh, I found a lot better way to tighten and loosen these uh, shock uh, like top studs. Um, and the key is this um, special tool I have. Um, this tool fits the top of uh, this uh, shock. It is called OEM Tools 25284. Um, yeah, and it just fits on there. It is kind of tight, but it fits on there perfect. So you just put that on there, and then not only um, you know does it prevent this rod from moving, but also uh, when you try to change position on your wrench, uh, your wrench doesn't come off. It's automatically aligned. So and also there's a plate underneath here always to stop it because you're tightening or loosening it. And so you just go down, and then it stops your wrench. You can go the rest of the way. That kind of action. So this is the best setup, and this is a 14 millimeter wrench. From here, it was time to put the tires on, and she was ready for an alignment. But that's for another episode. Thanks for watching.